What's up, this is your boy Lenny the Barber, and I'm here with my man Keith Perrin from FUBU. Yes, FUBU. Still here, been here, and Same building, 21 years strong, you heard? So, so I appreciate you taking this interview. No, for sure, talk, man. Talk. For sure. Um, first off, I want to just congratulate you and your team for still being in the game, for still being entrepreneurs, for, you know, the fact that you guys have been in business for, what, 20 plus years? Yeah, yeah um, it's been a You know, uh, that speaks for itself by itself, but you know there, there aren't many companies out here that have been in business for 20 plus years. And you know I remember you guys- Let alone an urban. Let alone an urban. Urban, urban so-called urban, urban talk, company, talk. you know, so. Um, and you, you know, you guys beat the odds of, you know, somebody actually having an idea and saying this is what we want to do and actually doing it. Right. So um, can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the beginning of, you know, how you got involved with FUBU and, 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 you know, yeah, pretty much how you got involved. Well, you know, um, I met Jay and Damon in, in high school. You know, he was like 13, 14 years old. And we just became like best of friends. And, okay. And when I turned 17, I got into a car accident, a real bad car accident, mm -hmm. hanging around with the wrong cats, doing the wrong things, and I almost died that night. So I had a couple of group of friends. I had my group of friends around my, my way. Right. And then I had Damon and Jay and Carl right. around their way. So I decided, I was like, you know what? Hanging with these guys, I get nothing but trouble. Right. You know, I'm running from police constantly. So let me let me hang out with Damon and them because we're right. traveling. We're going on tour with that local right. Jay. And <laughs> we're having a good ass time. Right. Um, so I started to do that. And then once we, you know, because we started FUBU, um, I was like 20, right? you know, so it was only a couple of years later that we started FUBU, right. but it was really, you know, just hats, right. strictly hats, you know, um, my little sister wound up being a model in, in the first ad that we did wow. for FUBU, we had a 900 number, right. you know, people from <laughs> Japan, like people always say, oh, it's made for black people, I said, listen, the first people to ever wear our clothes were J Japanese people, wow. because they, they jumped on it first, so Damon, you know, he had this idea and he said, you know, I don't know what I, I quite want to do with this, but I know we can make some money. Right. So I was like, all right, well, you know, I, I'm working. Like, the, the obstacle for us was that we were all working other jobs. Right, right. So it was hard for us to give him the 100% that he wanted. Right. And he was getting a little frustrated. He was like, yo, you should quit your job, man. Come on, let's do it. I'm like, D, I got a little girl. Right. My mama bought my behind. Right. <laughs> you know, I got to pay child support. I don't right. want to even go through that right, right now. So, you know, let's wait till this thing takes off a little bit. And it kept stopping and starting. And, right. you know, like, then Jay came home. He had a couple of dollars and he put it in the right. business. That lasted a few months. Right. It just it, it just wasn't enough money to get over the hump. Right. So D said, you know what? Maybe mortgage my house for $100,000 and put that money in the business and see what it, where it can go. That lasted us. I don't even think it lasted us a year, a whole year. Um, and then, but from that, we were able to make enough presence where, you know, Hype Williams was our boy, so right. he always kept us on every video set. Right. Lover, this one, that one LL was doing, wow. Boys the Men. Everybody who was doing wow. something that Hype shot at that time, right. Hype would give us the call. Yo, I'm shooting so-and-so today, come through. So when you looked at what we were doing, you thought we had you know, a whole line of clothes. That's we only crazy. had about seven, eight shirts. That's crazy. So we would go to the to the seat to the to the uh, shoot, put it on the people. Be like, yeah, and they would feel good about it. Oh man, I'm wearing this. Huh? Right. Then at the end of the shoot, let me, let me get that back. Let me, <laughs> let me get that. I'm gonna send you something, and we would take it back. We would make up some That's regular no. t-shirts because what we had was like right. the premium stuff. Right. So right. we would go back, make up a couple of Fubu <laughs> t-shirts, and send them a couple of t-shirts right. and hats. Um, but that presence gave us the image of that, like we were this big company that had right. all of these, you know, shirts. And it wasn't, it wasn't even the case. So Damon said, you know what? I want to go out to this show out in Vegas called Magic Show and see what we can do there. Now, I, at the time I was, I was a, a, a property manager mm -hmm. for low income family housing up in Harlem. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't take off that week. Right. So I said, yo, I'm gonna send my cousin with you. Let him go down there with you. And then, you know, just to cover my area and help you whatever, whatever mm -hmm. you need. So they went down there and came back and came back with $300,000 worth of orders. So when they came back, I was like, yo, we got $300,000 worth of orders. We about to be paid, man, let's go. He said, but I don't have no money to make the product. That is crazy. So what the hell are we going to do? So I'm like, damn, now that we got all these orders, we can't even make the product. 
So what happened was his mom said, you know what? Put out, put an ad in the New York Times for a million dollars in orders need financing. So like, you know, we young at the time. We wasn't, you know, too savvy in this business. Uh -huh. We didn't even know the things that we were doing were, were called marketing right. or branding right. at that time. Right. So once we put the ad in the paper, the wolves started calling. Right. You know, hey, what do you need? You need a couple million? I got 10 million. Just come down to my office. Right. Like, who the hell? Like, we from Hollis, Queens, Queens, delicious. <laughs> You're like, listen, people don't ask you for, right. they, don't, they don't tell you they're going to give you millions of dollars over the phone and they haven't even met you. Right. So we beat out all those guys. And um, set up a meeting with Samsung. Right. Came up here, sat down. The guy was like, okay, we'll see. Um, smoking on a cigar. Right. And then next thing you know, Damien came back to the house. He said, how did it go? We got the deal. What's going on? He was like, oh, the guy said he'll call us. I'm like, oh. Right. <laughs> you know, it was always that oh, feeling. So after that, we said, you know what? Let's and keep still 300,000 in sales are sitting out there. Just sitting out there. So after that, we said, you know what? Let's continue to do what we do. Now, yeah. at this time, we started, you know, just pooling our money together, was able to make different type of products. We just did Buster Rhymes, Hoo Ha, you know, he uh -huh. had been jacking on. So we were like, oh, now we're getting bigger. You know, we got better pieces. We're getting in bigger videos. And then we did, um, Fredro Star, I remember called the house one day and was like, listen, I'm coming over. You know, I need some clothes and shoot New York undercover. So I'm mm. like, all right, cool, you know, come through. You know, because at that time, everybody came to the house. Right. So we were like, all right, cool. We so y'all lived, lived there? And we, we lived there. We turned into a factory. We had, wow. we had like, little Spanish ladies come on the, on, right. on the weekends and, or sometimes during the week and sewing all the clothes, helping us sew the clothes right. together. And then next thing you know, um, Fredro comes by. He shoots New York Undercover. He puts on one of our FUBU shirts with the patch on it. And he got killed in the episode. But it was one of those 30 second falls. Right. So all you saw on TV was this FUBU sign on there. And I'm like, I'm sitting there watching and I'm like, because we've never been on TV. Wow. Like TV right. episodes, we always been in videos. Right, it was right, never right. a TV show. Right. So we were just ecstatic that we were even on a TV show. To, get, to have him get killed in our shirt and it take him 30, 30, 30 seconds to die was priceless. Right. It was like a commercial. So the guys here seen, you know, seen the show and was like, oh, these guys are still doing their thing. Called us up and said, hey, I see you guys still doing your thing. You know, we should come back and, you know, revisit this mm -hmm. conversation. And, then, you know, we came back up, sat down with them. They liked it. That's dope. the deal and, That's and dope. we moved on from there. That's a dope-ass story. Um, what made you... And, 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 and it, it, I understand that you guys are, I know that you guys are part of hip hop culture. Right. Um, but what made Keith, like, not go towards, you know, club music or whatever? What made you fall in love with hip hop? Like, what made you. See, I, I, I'm from, you know, I, I lived in Queens Village, mm -hmm. right? I grew up in Queens Village, Queens. My family was in Hollis, Murdoch, right. Farmers, right. you know, South. Like, I had family all around Queens. So I used to be in everybody's house. Right. So when I walked to my aunt's house who lived on Hollis, so I walked to my grandmother's, both my grandmother lived in Hollis. Mm -hmm. And when I walked to their house, I went to their house, you would see Run DMC. You would see Jam Master J. That's you would crazy. see LL Cool J. You right. would see Russell Simmons. You would right. see Salt and Pepper. Right. You would see Eric B and Rakim. You know, you would see them actually, it wasn't like, you know, cats were just driving down the street. Like, it was, no, it was nothing. And we were like, wow. See, in our neighborhood, we had three things. We had the working class, mm -hmm. the Supreme Team, right. Fat Cat and, right. and Green Eye Cream no and all of them. No doubt. And then we had the entrepreneurs, which was Russell Simmons and LL and all of them. So, we used to go to the park jams. Right. You know, they used to throw these park jams. And I just fell in love with it because I was like, yo. This is this is the illness. Like right. I get to see when when I'm looking at people and they go, I wish I could be LL Cool J. And I'm like, LL Cool J was right. just in the park. Right. They did like 12 songs right. like for free. Right. Like we were right there. And they plugged it up into the pole and right. you know. So being around all of that, right. it made us like, okay, I want like that's why I first got you know even the thought of being an entrepreneur. Right. You know, I said maybe I'm gonna have to work a couple of years, but I'm gonna do something else. That I'm gonna own my own business. Didn't know what it was, right? But that just seeing them inspired me. So every time I see L, you know, we talk about it, or you know, we used to talk about it. We don't talk about it no more. But 
Even Russell, man. I'll tell him, I'll say, Russell, man, you were so much of a big influence on me, you have no idea. That's dope. Without even trying to be, he was an influence right. on me. Because right. I saw a, a young black man, you know, even though he was running with uh, Rick Rubin and all of them, right. but he was a young black man from my hood right. doing, putting all this stuff together, like right. just mixing it up. And then, you know, you, you, you had the Crush Groove, you had the movie theater, right. like everything was so hip hop back right. then. And right. I grew up in, in that, that time. Right. Right, you know, right. so I appreciate, you know, I, and just to elaborate on that, I'm about to open up FUBU Radio. Um, and my f time frame is like 88, 89 to like 2004. I'm just going to okay. stop there. Right. You know, I'm going to have that. a, I'm going to have a, you know how they have old school throwback right. at noon? I'm going to have a new school right. throwback right. at noon. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Because I just, I just feel like. That era was so priceless. You had the Biggie, you had Nas. You had, it, it's just like the, the rappers today, and I don't mean to go too far ahead, but the mm -hmm. rappers today, some of them are nice. Right. I, I give it to them. But we call it like me and my partner was having a conversation the other day. We called it dope boy music, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. cats right now, you know, you need money to get. Do you feel like hip hop is moving in a positive direction or do you feel like we're like... You don't know where I it's think, going. I think it's stagnant right now, man. Okay. You know, you know I, 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 before it was the whole Atlanta, you know, scene mm -hmm. was killing it. Mm -hmm. Now that's starting to cool off a mm -hmm. little bit. You know, you still got the TIs and, you know, Little Chris, which is, you know, those are my people. So mm -hmm. I, I still rock with them. But it's, it's just not there. What I'm loving right now, I'm loving the new Jada, Jada Kiss mixtape. I'm loving the new Fabulous mixtape okay. because they're mixing all the old songs and rapping right. over them and just creating that. That, that sound that was, right. you know, was so right. vibrant back in the days. Right. You know what I'm and saying? And two rappers that, that have great content all yeah, the time. all the time. Like, I wish they were bigger than what they were. Right. You know, I always support them. I always buy their albums. I always, you know, listen to their songs. Like, right. Fab, that's, that new song is just ridiculous. Right. Like, I'm right. just like, nah, this is crazy. Fabulous. But, you know, and then I think, you know, even with the whole shift in, like, we, you know how they say, oh, New York was dead. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think New York is dead. I just think we're chasing a sound. Mm -hmm. And we need to stick to what we were doing right. before and just steady, just, you know. And be New York. And just be New York. It's going to come back. Like, right. even with us, we felt like at a point when we were doing clothes, our, our whole model was get the, get the effing money. Right. Right? We didn't feel like we were going to be here no more than two, three years. So our concept was just go in here and make as much money as you can. And it might have been the wrong concept because we wound up being around for a little while, but we shot our load. So after eight, nine years, ten years of being consistent, you're gonna die. Yeah. Like people are not gonna keep wanting to wear, right. you know. And then we were giving clothes out. We were going out giving clothes to the needy, you know, just trying to do that whole give back thing, mm -hmm. which you know people start seeing, you know, cats that were on the street homeless people or whatever the case and they had on FUBU mm -hmm. it didn't bother us right. at all but it bothered people who were wearing it and they didn't want to you know oh man I don't want to wear it and this guy got it on FUBU's dead and, you know so we planted seeds overseas and we were like okay well when this starts to die this will pick up and we'll keep it moving and you know and things like that but and you guys are still moving overseas no nah, we slowed down like we, we just slowed everything down we actually just did a um uh, uh, collaboration with Creppy Man in Japan. Okay. And it's really, it's a real huge brand out there. And we just did a little collab on it, did like four or five hundred pieces. Okay. Doing really well. Um, Dame, I think Dame is about to go out there on Monday okay. to just check it out and see what's going on. I'll do okay. some other business, but walk about, walk around there and check it right. out. But, um, you know, right now we, we, see, we've always been ahead of the curve. So, when we were slowing down, we were thinking about, okay, we need to get some more brands. Let's develop this brand. We developed Crown Holder. We bought Kooji. We did this. You know, mm -hmm. we started making other strategic mm -hmm. moves, mm -hmm. which allowed us to still be here, right, <laughs> still right. have the lights on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. a lot of people, you know, like I thought Jay and Puff, and I thought they was going, you know, just right. keep going. They slowed down. Right. Like the whole, that whole mint here, you know, us, mm -hmm. Puff, Academics, mm -hmm. Mark mm -hmm. Echo, 50 Cent, brand like all of us it kind of it died because people started going for lower price points mm -hmm. you know it, it was 2008 you know the economy was messed up right. and right. you know it, it was a time for the switch and right. and when when it happened these these brands such as uh 
H and M, Abercrombie mm -hmm. and Fitch, mm -hmm. um, American Apparel. Mm -hmm. They were giving out, you know, making nice, you know, nice jeans for thirty dollars, right. forty dollars. Right. So now, in, in, in today's time, you can go buy a, a, a distressed pair of Levi's for a hundred dollars, right. and that'd be the, the the you know one of the highest you know right. Right. pieces you have on. Right. You have on a five dollar T shirt. Right. You might have on a three hundred dollar belt. You might have on some Gucci sneakers or some some right. you know something to dress it up. Right. But you know these kids now they're not they're not wearing if you're not wearing that you are wearing high end. Right. There's that middle that tier is, is kind of phasing out. Right. You know. So. Right. 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 I mean, it seems like you guys are keeping lights on around here. It's a big ass office you got here. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. Um, so did you guys buy other you guys license other brands. Yeah, we license out. We, we'll buy the brand and then we'll work with it for a couple of years. And if it's not, you know, doing numbers that we wanted to mm -hmm. do, then we we'll probably just license it out so we don't right. have to really deal with it. Um, but we we'll still get residuals from it. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we purchased a few brands here. We purchased okay. a, a bunch of brands here. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's definitely kept the lights on. And then now, you know, I'm, I've even moved into the whole shark branding part of the business right okay. now with Damon and the Shark Tank thing. Right, right. So, I'm kind of doing what I did for for Fubu mm -hmm. now for Shark Branding. So I deal. I'm the um, brand manager for Celebrity Integration. So I deal oh, with really? all the celebrities, get them all the new products that we got coming out, and you know okay. follow up with them. And you know, so it, 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 it's been good, man. It's been good. It's That's been dope. a good transition. You know? Dope, dope, dope. Well, I thank you very much for this interview, Keith, man. Okay, like, um, sure. from the bottom of my heart, again, I want to you know congratulate you guys on your success. The fact that you guys have been able to stay in the game. Um, keep up with the game and diversify yourselves to be able to, you know, do different things. I mean, who would have thought, you know, four guys sewing clothes in a crib would be on major television on a show like Shark Tank? Right. And, 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 you know, you guys, you guys making that hobby or, you know, that idea into a real flourishing business. Just so you guys know, um, we are on the 66th floor of the Empire State Building. Um, the office looks like it's about, I don't know, let me see, blah, blah, blah. I would say about 100,000 square feet, if you ask me. Um, <laughs> we I got the whole floor, everywhere. though. They got the whole floor. So, <laughs> it's been you know, our floor for about 15 years. Right. So it's like, so, you know, you guys have been able to sustain in business and, and, and sustain yeah. yourselves and stay in business. And, you know, that's to be commended, man. Commended from anybody that, you know, has an idea and believe in it and do the right things to get to, to um, make your business flourish. I know uh, when I was talking to uh, Jay a couple of minutes ago, he was saying that, you know, when everybody, somebody has an idea for a business, they're always like, oh yeah, this business is gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. Well, why do you think it's not gonna work? And you need to knock down the reasons why it's not gonna work so that when you get to where it's gonna work, you really believe in it and it, you, you guys believe. But you know what, it's, it's a, it's been a shift in, in business. You know, back when we started, mm -hmm. you were able to come up with an idea and it was a good enough idea mm -hmm. and you had enough, you know, not, not even a lot of power behind mm -hmm. it, but enough power to, to keep it going, mm -hmm. then an investor would rock with you. Right. Now, everybody's holding on to their money. Right. They're like, listen, what are you doing for your own brand? Right. Are you pushing it where your sales at? Like, it's all more about sales. Right. So when I consult with people now, I tell them, I say, listen, it's not about coming up with an idea and trying to make it work. It's about starting your business, working your business, growing your business, right. and just staying steady and not really worrying about who's going to come and invest because then you get sidetracked. Right. I said, and then you don't want to build something, take four or five years to build something, and then give away half of your company right. where you're not even controlling anymore. Right. You become a designer. Right. You know, so it, it's a lot of different elements to it. And I just want to give a shout out to Dame because he just was named by President Obama for the for the ambassador of entrepreneurship three yes. days ago. So, so gangster. it's like, you know, I didn't got me a little I got me some presidential cufflinks now. Right. You know, he came back with the presidential cufflinks for me. I'm like, yo. <laughs> so it's good that's to good. have good friends in hot places. You know, know what I'm saying? Right. And that's I'm also right. shooting a TV show. Okay. Um, called Candid Terry and Keith, um, which we're, we're launching on Launch TV. Okay. So, you know, we're and to the keep radio it going. show you also. And the radio show, I'm going to be launching that the first of the month, June 1st. And where, so, where can we find the radio show? Um, it's going to be internet. It's going to okay. be internet. Um, okay. So, you know, and that's called Fubu be, Radio. Fubu Radio. Dope. Right on Facebook. Dope. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Fubu Radio. And what is your Facebook and, and Twitter? My Facebook is. Uh, what the hell is my Facebook? I don't even really be on Facebook. Well, you can find me on the Keith Twitter. Perrin on Facebook. Okay. But um, 
on on Instagram is Kizo K E K E E Y Z O, okay. and on Twitter is Mr. Kizo K E E Y Z O. Right. Yeah. So that's that. There you go, Mr. Kizo. Man is still in business, twenty plus years. We appreciate you talking hip hop. Appreciates you. Yo, what's up? This your boy Keith from Fubu, chopping it up with my man Lenny the Barber, right here on Talking Hip Hop. Keep it locked. Don't change the dial. All right. A lot of great things coming up.